Poison Ivy, issue nine, G. Willow Wilson, and uh, oh, it's Takara. Mauricio isn't it? Takara. So this issue is a. You can definitely tell that it's not quite a placeholder, but um, Ivy has just saved the the one lady with her cancer, and they're living in Seattle together. And Ivy's starting to have some doubts about this mission because they've moved to a part of Seattle that is still very entrenched in like earth and the plants. And she's just like, yeah, this is kind of living in harmony. It should be like this. Um, and then there's a knock at the door and it's none, none other than Pam's girlfriend, Harley. Um, and there's a lot of love and affection throughout this book. Um, that these two have missed each other. And we find out that a lot of the narration that Pam had been writing were letters to Harley. Cause Harley mentions that, you know, she, she could tell how she was feeling in the letters that she had sent back to Gotham. Um, and so they get together and you know, it's what couples do after they've been apart for a while, they immediately hit the bedroom um and slam the door on on her roommate um and as they're laying in bed together uh pam starts worrying about the lamia because she's like i gotta constantly keep this in check i've been using this to basically touch into my powers because i've lost them since i was queen ivy and harley's like well i i want to know what this is like can you you infect me you can control the infections like you beat woodrow you know and Ivy's like, I don't know, maybe it's not the, the smartest thing, but Harley's like, when have I ever done what's the smartest thing? Um, and this is all wonderfully drawn by by Takara. Like the, the layouts here, there's not a lot of space between Harley and Ivy, which is really nice because it's really playing into, you know, their body language and their closeness and, and all of that type of stuff. So um, Ivy hits her with a little dose of the spores in she essentially starts like she's tripping on on mushrooms. She starts seeing all the colors and all of the, you know, the different shapes and uh, stuff that, that anytime Ivy is fully given in that we've seen. Um, and uh, Harley's like, yeah, I, I like this. I want to do this more. So they go out into Seattle while Harley's kind of rolling on on this psychedelic. And she, she realizes that it's basically it's, Ivy is now through this infection with the fungus is allowing other people to see what their green is like. And it's almost like unlocking this empathy because as Harley's experiencing the stuff, they're going around Seattle and she is seeing almost like Seattle from the beginning of time. So she's seeing the plants and like all the other creatures. So as they're like in this downtown area with this, you know, so Seattle has one of those big, like London eye um, Ferris wheels. Uh, over off of a pier and while they're by this one she looks down the street and she sees like this big huge tree with like surrounded by mastodons and she's like yeah i saw everything that used to be here this is it's like not breaking her brain but definitely forcing her into a different perspective um and and ivy is just like well yeah this like the delirium doesn't scare you you this is kind of always who you've been you're okay with with these kind of battling thoughts and, and struggles. Um, and um, so, you know, her trip ends basically and they're, they're walking through like famous landmarks through Seattle and they get to talking about, you know, Ivy's whole mission. And she's like, well, you know, Harley tells Pam, you're not this like queen bad guy. Like, I know you think you are cause that's what you've tried to convince everybody but there's a good person in there still. If not, I wouldn't be here. And, you know, and she's like, well, no, but, you know, I'm only like this because of, of the parasite. Like, this is not me. Like, I had all the evil intentions. This is the parasite doing this. And she goes, no, I don't think so, because I followed your trail here to Seattle. And uh, there's more stuff. So she pulls out her phone and there's a little funny scene where she keeps pulling stuff out of her pockets. Very Looney Tune style. There's like a rubber duck and then like a mini like judge's mallet right before she finally gets to her phone where she shows her you know the you know the garden that that ivy helped plant a couple issues ago right after the woodrow stuff is become like a full-on botanical garden there's those giant trees and 
um, the picture that Harley shows her is, you know, with the lady that was working there. Um, and she's like, yeah, you completely changed the, the, you know, biogenetic stuff in that area. So you're not, you are still in touch with the green. It's just different. And Harley uses her psych psychiatry side to be like, yeah, I think like something happened when you're a queen Ivy and you feel, you feel neutered. Like you feel like something was taken from you and this is all just a mental block. And she, uh, Harley offers, uh, Ivy to come back to Gotham with her. Um, and you know, they, they start kissing in the rain and, um, Ivy's like, no, I can't, I have to stay here, you know? Um, and, um, they hug on, on their way back and, um, or as, as Harley's leaving, they hug and, you know, she goes, you know, but once you're done doing whatever you're doing, come, come back to me, please. And, uh, this is one of the lines that stuck really well with me. And this is why I like Wilson as a writer. Cause, uh, she says, you know, uh, uh, Ivy tells Harley, a bird may love a fish, but where would they live? And Harley just looks back over her and is like, no, you, you know, the answer is silly. It's penguins and penguins love Gotham. Right. So they, they look and that's where the, it ends is, you know, Pam standing in the doorway watching Harley as she leaves. Um, and, you know, she says, yep, uh, as, as soon as I'm done, you know, she tells Janet, her roommate, start packing. We've got work to do and that her destination is towards Harley. So um, really enjoyed this issue for someone that was such anti Harley Quinn as much as I have. These current crop of writers that have have used her to varying degrees, whether it's been. Tynan or Taylor or I'm trying to think who else has done stuff with Harley that's not just Sejic. Um, I feel like when she's almost like a seasoning that if you get too much of her, it kind of ruins the meal, but the right amount really elevates it. Uh, and of course, you can't really have a proper Ivy story without Harley at this point. They're so entwined. Um, so yeah, just seeing that she, you know, brings out the best in Pam and that Pam was all full of self-doubt until she had talked with her, you know, her, her main squeeze uh, was just a really nice sentimental issue. Um, and again, this is in that weird zone where we didn't know if it was an ongoing or anything. So it's kind of like Wilson just trying to get out all of her Harley and Ivy stuff in this one issue. And I think she does it really well. And then just the art too. This is definitely up for art of the week for me because just the way that Takara dry, draws all of these characters and, you know, again, the the breakdowns and how close they're constantly standing and, you know, the body language between them. Uh, it's just really nice. And their colors bounce well off of each other. Cause you know, Harley's all in the black and red and then you have Pam in the green with her red hair and they just, they weirdly complement each other in that way. Um, so, so yeah, uh, thoroughly enjoyed this issue. Glad to have Takara back on art. Um, I'm going to give us an 8.5.